Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Tips with me, Micah Hoffman from the OSINT Curious Project. Today, we're going to be dealing with some domain name issues, and sometimes you're going, you might be asked by a customer to go ahead and see if anybody's doing any typo squatting. Now, what typo squatting is, very simply, is if you ever go to a web page like, uh, let's just pick google.com, and instead of typing google.com, you repeat a different character, like goggle.com, or you fat finger a character, or if somebody else maybe wants to set up a phishing domain that looks like google.com, there's what are called homomorphic characters that look like an O, a G, an E, but are not actually the, those uh, characters. And they can set up those domains and then send attacks to, to customers, hoping that those customers of Google or those users of Google will then uh, click on that link with the homomorphic domain or those repeated keys or whatever. And they, then the attacker will have the opportunity to compromise a browser. So let's take a look at one of the premier tools that we can use for this. And it is actually right here, DNS twist. Now, again, I'll put these uh, these URLs into the show notes here, but this is where we can find it on GitHub. And what DNS Twist does is it knows how to add, replace, insert, uh, put dashes or periods into domain names that you supply. Then it looks up using the domain name system, it looks up if those domains exist. And if it does, it tells you what it's what it resolves to what ip address or other information now what we see on the screen here is is an animated gif that shows some of the different features we're going to go ahead and play with it ourselves now i'm here in a windows system i've got the linux subsystem running and i've gone ahead and installed or downloaded and git cloned the dns twist application so if I go ahead and run DNS twist, doo -doo -doo -doo, it gives us all the different things that I could do. I'm going to do it in its very simplest form and just go ahead and do a DNS twist for, um, let's say the OSINT curious domain. Now, one of the things that you have to realize is the longer the domain name that you supply it, the longer it's going to take to complete because it's got to replace every single one of the characters in here with ones that look like it or putting dashes in or doing other stuff. So the longer the domain name, the more time it's going to take. If I wanted to go ahead and output the, the content in the CSV or JSON or something else like that, I could do that. I could also provide a dictionary file if I know that there are certain words I wanted to test or certain domains I wanted to test. We can do that as well. Let's just go ahead and run the very most uh, basic version of this. And you can see that just by using osincurio.us, there's 3,857 different domain variants for that. That's a lot. We're going to let this cook. Uh, you ever seen one of those baking shows where somebody put, puts the muffins into the oven to be baked? And as they're doing that, they're pulling out muffins that they've already got in there. I'm going to do that to you this time. What we're going to do is we're going to use the same type of system here as the DNS twist local application. But we're going to use a web version of it. Yeah, if you go to the DNS twister dot report dns twister dot report you can do the exact same thing on somebody else's server now of course we have the third party aspect of this who owns the server what are they doing with the data and you can see down here it, it gives us a little bit of it. it tells you the privacy statement please 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 check into that before you start using this tool in your work but we can do the same type of thing if we're okay with it <laughs> You know, I give you those caveats and I'm like, oh, let's just go ahead and do it. Here, we're going to go ahead and do osincurio.us. And when we submit that, we can see that it's pretty darn fast. And it's going and it's doing the resolution of those. The only one it's found is the original one, osincurio.us. But look, by sectioning up and, and making subdomains, we it's found a different one. So for osincurious 
There's one subdomain here that is red registered. Um, if we click on the show unresolved domain names, you'll see all of the different things that it tried. You see how it inserted letters. Here's a D, E, F, G. So it's adding letters. You scroll down, we have bit squatting. So these are different characters around different parts of the, the keys. Here we have hom homoglyphs or homoglyphs. You can see there's little characters under here. Here's a mu. Here's some, uh, here's an umlaut over the O. And these characters are look or may look similar to what you're looking up. And out of all of these, the only one that actually did show up was the uh, the one with the subdomain. Let's try a different one. Let's try sans.org. It's a short number of characters, so it'll complete pretty darn quickly. And one of the things that we always have to look at when we're doing OSINT is we're getting results back. We're getting data but we have to analyze it. We have to understand, hey, you know, does this matter? Is it a false positive? For instance, by adding the letter A here, they found that sansa.org is a real domain. Oh my God, if somebody's squatting on this, this domain, probably not. It's probably a company or something like that. That is sansa.org. And if we hit analyze or we went ahead and did some other stuff, we could look further into this. Heck, we could really just visit this website, right? If there's a website there. Now we do see some bit squatting. Now the tool says that this is bit squatting, but again, is cans.org or wans.org or sends.org a real valid domain that some other company is using? That's where you're going to actually have to do your false positive testing. Here we have some homoglyphs, some insertion, omissions. And again, you would need to do the results. Now, the nice thing about this is that we can take this information, export it to a CSV, and then run it through another tool like Eyewitness, which we'll do in a later episode. While that's working, or while that's while we've been doing this, let's go back and check on DNS Twist. Now you can see over here, we're still going on the local version of this tool. It it starts it with a default number of 10 threads. I probably should have bumped this up quite a bit before starting it off for the OSINT Curio. And that's one of the drawbacks to using the, the local version. I'm going to go ahead and kill it here. Now, one of the things that I love that's out there in the world is these OSINT frameworks. You, you might be familiar with OSINTframework.com. There's OSINTframework.de, technozet.com, and a bunch of other Start Me pages. The tools that we've gone through, or a couple of the tools that we've gone through, can be found in OSINTframework.com, Domain Name, Typo Squatting, DNS Twist, the tool that I downloaded and ran locally, and DNS Twister the written DNS twister dot report website. Just to show that this does work, let's go ahead and use a short domain like sans.org and have it run that exact same scan that we saw DNS twister work on, uh, go ahead and work on DNS twister dot report. What we should see in just a second is a report that looks extremely similar to what we saw on DNS Twister, and sure enough, here's those replacements, transpositions, we have the omissions. So we have all of this. And again, if we wanted to, we could output this to JSON, CSV, etc., just like what we see over here on DNS Twister, JSON, CSV export. The other nice thing about this is that you can copy this URL, and that's the URL to the specific report you just ran. If you run this tomorrow, it'll have a different unique identifier at the end, and you can compare what you found yesterday to what you found today. I am out of time now. I've been Micah Hoffman, and I want to say thank you for watching, and stay OSINT curious.